Hello, DW Berman here. I have a this week I'm going to go over VPR, the Lightwaves Viewport Renderer. As you can see here, I have this rendering, this world rendering in my scene, in my viewport, right here as it happens. If I switch over to uh, the regular shaded solid or texture shaded, you'll see it's just the OpenGL preview, but now it's the actual render engine at work. Um, this is good for previewing your surfaces, most of the surfaces. If I right click, if I shift click on it, it'll actually bring up the surface editor with the surface I clicked on selected. So that's a nice feature. Um, if I come over here, you can see it also works with, where is it? Where is it? Yep, there it is. Whoa. Also works with volumetric lights because uh, it actually is quite good at rendering and previewing volumetric lights and hypervoxels, both things which take a little longer to render, uh, getting faster with faster computers, but they still take a longish time to render. But with the VPR, we can actually get a pretty good look at what they're going to look like when they render. And in some cases, they actually render faster in VPR than they do in the regular renderer. And I will show you how to get those regular or get get a, a render out of Lightwave for that. So um, yep those are just some things that this can preview. Um, it will also preview uh, fiber effects if you have volume mode turned on. So um, this is the old version of this scene. Okay um, some things you might want to know up here to the right of the uh, VPR or our viewport settings window we have more viewport settings we have OpenGL overlay in which case we can see an OpenGL overlay of our different items and we have OpenGL wireframe now the trick with OpenGL wireframe is you actually have to have an object selected in order for it to show up as a wireframe we... Hello. Oh. there we go Almost. Where's my world? I lost the world. It's around here somewhere. Okay. Enough of this silliness. There's our world. And uh, there's our world on wireframes. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have another option thing specifically for VPR. This looks like um, a list of things three lines with dots to the side of them. We have uh, draft mode, half resolution, and volume shader shadows. I'm not familiar with volume shadows. I'm just assuming it's a checkbox for turning on and off volume shadows. Uh, render FPS. This is frames per second. I'm not exactly sure how to explain this, but the way I tend to use it is if I have something that is never resolving, like it's always just uh, let me. Yeah, if it's always just kind of blocky and just kind of starts over again before it finishes, sometimes turning down render FPS will help. I've had situations where I've had things that uh, resolved so quickly that when I hit play down here, they would. Uh, when I was just playing the timeline. They would resolve just as it went to the next key, uh, yeah, the next frame, and um, it kind of just got stuck in a loop. I had to uh, actually do a manual force quit kind of a thing for Lightwave to uh, stop it from doing that because it just kept going. Uh, turning down or up the FPS may have helped in that situation. We also have in this panel the option to set our color space. And that's a color space setting thing, so I'm not going to deal with that in this video. And we also have this RGB files thing. What this does is this lets t us set a base name and the location for saving our viewport render pictures. Um, by default, I believe it's set to the desktop. And you activate that function by clicking on this picture of this square with this other little square on top of it with a down arrow. Um, for those of my generation, we know this to be a floppy disk. 
I'm not sure how that's going to relate to uh, people in the next generation who never had to deal with floppy disks. So uh, yeah, here's our viewport renderer of our scene. Notice that we don't have the OpenGL wireframe. And in fact, when I turn this back to the regular OpenGL, we no longer have the option to just click and save. Um, to open VPR, to switch between VPR and OpenGL mode, you can hit Control F9, and that'll actually flip between the two. Uh, if you are in camera mode and you hit L, you'll notice that our limited region also works, so you can resize your window however you need to, and you'll see exactly what your scene is. You can also use this to just kind of focus in on one small area so you don't have to preview the entire frame just to get a look at that one little area. So a limited region is handy. Uh, let's see. I wanted to show you the difference between half uh, draft mode and regular mode and to do that I'll load up this other scene I have. Load. Okay, so if I open this up and turn VPR on, you'll see I'm seeing everything. Let me turn OpenGL wireframe and overlay off. Okay, so here's my picture. If I turn on draft mode, you'll notice most of the stuff goes away. This is because it's a kaleidoscope scene, and it's very dependent on reflections. And one of the things that gets cut off when you're doing... Uh, previewing in VPR with draft mode on is uh, ray tracing. Uh, it's limited to a much smaller set of bounces. So now it's only bouncing you know, a few times instead of the, the full amount of times. Uh, this also affects the, the glass surface, the dielectric node. Um, and also affects uh, radiosity. Radiosity is limited to one bounce. So if you're working on a scene with global illumination and you're using multiple bounces and, you know, why aren't these bounces showing up? Well, it's because draft mode is on. And to kind of compensate for draft mode being off, they also give us half resolution, which uh, it looks blurry, but it uh, lets us render a little quicker. Okay. Now if I switch this back to uh, multiple viewports, you see I have two viewports here. And say you wanted to, you know, look at the VPR. I'm just hitting F3 to cycle through these viewport modes. There we go. What if you wanted to have VPR on both of these? Well, by default you cannot because it's not very stable if you do. But there is a way to do that. And I'm going to actually turn down my render frames per second just because when I've done this in the past, it's been a little too crazy to have both of these open at the same time. So, yeah, if I go to, uh, if I hold down Control and Shift and hit F1, you notice experimental features are enabled. One of the experimental features is the ability to use. VPR in more than one viewport. Now, like I said, it's an experimental feature. And in this particular scene, it looks like it just pretty much just locks it all up. So, yeah, that's not helpful. Another thing we're told not to do is to use VPR and Viper at the same time, the older preview option, which is normally got yeah, I just hit F7, I think, to bring that up. So, yeah, you're not supposed to use these two together because of instability issues or something like that. I don't know. Um, as I mentioned before, that sometimes it's, it's faster to render uh, preview. Or, yeah, it's faster to render pre uh, hypervoxel preview. One thing you can do if you want it to match your camera exactly is hit D for display options and undock the preview window and click Use Camera Resolution. Now when you come down here and hit preview, or in make preview, it opens up a uh, window the size of your render options. And I can't really show you the bottom because it's off the screen. So um, yeah, I'll just hit cancel out of that one. 
in order to save that, you can either you know render it out and then save it down here with Save Preview, but you also want to set preview options anyway. You'll need to set your codec, and that'll save out a MOV or a AVI. If you want to save directly to an image sequence, you can also do that here through the Preview Options panel. Save RGB, set your uh, Yeah, your preview directory and your image file directory and uh, the file na base name. You could also save uh, your different uh, AVI options here. And uh, let me make that desktop. Desktop. I don't know if this will work, so I better not try it as far as saving the uh, animation goes. So desktop, just because, you know, it's the, the, it's kind of hit or miss how the codec works in conjunction with rendering something in process. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for desktop, the Okay. And I will just throw this in Lightwave. Test. Make preview frames 20. Okay, and I probably won't sit through this whole thing. Or at least I won't record through this whole thing. Okay, I'm back. Here's the uh, preview render. And let's see if I can find the files. Up here is my folder with the individual frames saved out. Okay, so this video took a little longer than I thought it would, especially since it was the second time through, and it took longer the second time, and I had fewer crashes and stuff. So, um, yeah, come on over to liberty3d.com to check out our training that we have over there. I have uh, a set of training that you can find under Citizens... Dana Berman, or D.W. Berman, Dana's videos. Um, also, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and uh, we will share in the experience of learning together. So, yeah, I'm trying to put up a video or so a week, so hopefully uh, we'll have learning experiences together. That's a lame way to end the video. Uh, anyway, I'll see y'all later.